What's going on Reefers, Blaine here. In today's video, we're gonna be continuing our tank tour series. In our first episode, we headed out to Mark Hatter's 180 gallon SPS dominated system, talked with him about his reef tank. And in today's video, we're gonna be heading south, checking out our in-house tank builders 800 gallon system. We're gonna talk fish, talk corals, and dive into this tank. All right, what's going on reefers? We are here with Derek today. Derek, thank you so much for having me. As you guys can see, this tank is unbelievable. You guys are seeing all the amazing fish. There's a ton of amazing corals, but we're gonna get down into it, talk to you guys just like we did in our last tank tour about what's going on with this reef, how it works, and how it all began. So Derek, we'll go ahead and start off with, how did you get into the hobby from the start? So for me, my brother is a freshwater breeder. He okay. breeds fish, and he's in Jamaica, so when he comes here, he would get breeders and he would have me take him all over town from Miami to who knows where. And I would always see the saltwater side of the wholesalers and I would always ask, hey, what about this one? And he said, oh, that's saltwater, that's saltwater. And I just fell in love with saltwater. The colors were better. It was just so much more intense. And I got my first tank, which was a little 25 gallon and that was the end of it. For sure. <laughs> Obviously, we have seen a lot of tanks that, if you guys don't know, Derek is one of our in-house tank builders for Top Shelf Aquatics, and he makes some amazing systems. I'll be showing you guys a couple of them that I've been able to see myself, but obviously, this is one that you've built. Yes. And when did you build this tank? So this one is a year old, Okay. Um, roughly, a little bit o over a year, and um, this is the biggest one I've had thus far, gotcha. personally. And you had a smaller one before? Yes, I gotcha. had a smaller one before, so it went from uh, oh wow, over the years 25 to 50 to 90 to 165 to 300 and now I believe this one is pushing about 800 total bars. Wow, okay, so it's like that snowball. Once you start right, you can't stop. Until you run out of walls. <laughs> right. So you're saying it's roughly about 800 yes, gallons. So is that main, including all down yes, below so as well? Okay. the main tank is uh, 675. Okay. And then I've got uh, some down below that we'll take a look at that's uh, about 180 gallons. Gotcha. What's the dimensions on the system? So it's 104 by uh, 34 by 36 tall. Wow. I love the depth of it and the height is really nice. I think you've given the fish a lot of swimming room. You have a lot of fish. Um, it seems like, you know, I, I you always tend to ask people, are you a coral person? Are you a fish person you have both but it seems like fish might be more of your calling I don't know so you know what I I'm one of those guys that want it all I want right. all the fish I want all the corals uh, I just want everything and over the years it has forced me to push certain limits I've just always liked a lot going on a lot of corals a lot of fish you know I just I've always loved it both ways for sure and it, you got a lot of movement whether it be the fish the corals yes. and I think right here smack in the middle once the SPS grows out that's yes. gonna be a really yes. cool transition in between all of them absolutely so how many fish do you think you have in the system I would say probably about 50 maybe between 50 and 60 in, okay. in the system right now um, and it's a nice mix so you will look at the tank for a couple hours and even hours later you'll still be seeing fishes popping up here and there. So I kind of like that. A lot of gobies, a lot of wrasse. You know, I try to spread it out across all the um, all the varieties, you know? So, yeah, it yeah. seems like you have a nice group of fish. Uh, yes. Like you said, you have some really cool choice wrasses. You have a great yep. group of tangs. You have some antheus. I've seen blennies. Yep. All kinds of gobies, all kinds of fish. I mean, I hate to make you pick your favorite kid, but if you had to choose a fish, what's probably one of your top favorite fishes in this tank? Uh, so, wow. So <laughs> I, I, I think I have more favorites in each group. So in the tank, Perfect. I think my favorite tang would probably be my pale lip. Where is he at? It's, it's that white, uh, it's a pale lip tang. Mm -hmm. I don't see him right there. He is going around the back. Okay. Um, just because he's one of those overlooked tangs. Not many people know what it is. It's not bright and gaudy like the others, but it's just harder to come by. Um, as far as my wrasse is, I think this guy is probably my favorite, which is a jewel wrasse. Um, just again, same reason. It's just a little bit harder to find. And then in my in my uh, towel fish, I like the Aramey mm. because they're you know they're just collectors. So in each group, I do have one particular favorite, and 
that's how it is. My daughter is the one that loves the Midas Glenny. Okay. And so we put his little hole right there mm -hmm. and he stays there. I have a nice mix of, you know, it's hard to pick just one. When it comes to your corals, you have a mm -hmm. wide selection. Is there a group that you really tend to lean towards so, or yet again, or you just love collecting them all? So I find that I go with a certain wave. So right. like I said, the tank before this was pretty much 100% SPS and I did it well. Um, big colonies and so the intention for this tank was I was gonna do SPS on the middle rock once my coralline algae started growing in and so the tanks relatively new but in the meantime while I was waiting for that I fell in love with torches and I fell in love with Ghani and as you can <laughs> see I'm almost pretty much pushing out of space so I will go with waves there are times when torch is what I want and I'll just buy torches mm -hmm. all day long and then other times it's hammers, other times it's ganis. And so, you know, I kind of go through that phase with my tank and you'll see it show up here. I like how with your scape, you've given, it a, it's a lot of negative space, but you've filled all that space with coral and yes. with all the colors. So I think you've done a really good job Thank mixing you. in all Thank of the you. things. Also, if you notice on a size tank like this, there's not a lot of float pumps. I just have two MP60s on the end. Right. And so the tank is designed to allow flow throughout the back regions of it with an open aquascape. And I like that, you know? And I saw that you have some of the yes. re return nozzles yes. are down below, plumb so down low. So it's a low. closed loop system. Gotcha, closed loop, okay. Yeah, I have a closed loop system that, that's running with a single, single pump. And because my overflow is in one corner, mm -hmm. the back corner, uh, if I don't have a, a means of giving me flow down at that end, then I'll have that skim at the top that sells. So my closed loop intake is in the back corner. You see those holes and then it outputs in four nozzles along the bottom of the tank, which pushes everything up and then my MP. And then brings it straight to, to it. The, okay. To the, to, the, to the overflow box. Gotcha. And then what are you doing for lighting? What's, what, are, what lights are you looking So I have uh, radians at the moment. Um, I believe it's, eight gen four radians up top xr um, 30s 30, yes okay xr 30s and we can check those out so eight of them just what's your lighting schedule how long does it run so uh, i would say about 13 hours roughly okay. it comes on at seven in the morning but just all blues and gently ramps up but the main light kicks in at uh 11 and cuts off at seven and then i just have a blue from seven to nine so it's a little more than 13, but like the the beginning and the, the end is just blue. Gotcha. You know, just a light blue, just for me to enjoy. So we just opened up the hood and we've got the UV sterilizers up here and it seems like you're running two of them. Yes, okay. I'm running two. So basically, uh, when I first set the tank up, I've always ran UV, but when I first set the tank up, because we were transferring so many fish in at once, along with so many new ones, I decided to add a UV and I had an outbreak and that's when I added the second the double one. one. Yes, okay. just for added protection. And uh, you know, all the fishes that you see in here are pretty much just rock solid. Yeah. I'm not the model of quarantine. <laughs> and when I buy a fish, I try to pick from good suppliers. But that being said, you know, I acclimate and put them in right. and then that's it. For but, sure. So, so this really does come in handy. This, the way the system is designed, uh, there's the pump takes it through that UV through my chiller and dumps it into my frag system down below and I noticed that it didn't matter how bad things were up top the frag system never got ick not a spot wow and that's when I added the Realized second, the one, second one and so both returns everywhere I get that um, that that um, UV protection gotcha with this many fish in the tank, what are you doing for feeding? How, how are you feeding? The, how are you keeping everybody happy? And how are so, you minimizing the aggression? I know that's probably yes, a big thing. Yeah, so believe it or not, this tank is the one tank that I have the least amount of fish. So when I have my 300 gallon tank, I had, I think somewhere around 80 fishes. Uh, the, the, the one before that I had, I got up to about 150 fishes. Wow. And so I feed heavy. I usually go through a flat pack of mysis in about a week, a wow. whole flat pack. So I do feed heavy, as you can see, the fishes are fat. Mm -hmm. So each morning I have three sheets of nori that goes on the glass and I spread it out that way so that each tank can at least get a little without one becoming dominant. Um, I have an auto feeder up at the top that feeds pellet around noon, just in case I'm not here. And then in the evening I'll feed frozen. What pellets so, are you feeding? 
It's a mix of spectrum, okay. so I have like a nice mix, some small, some, some big spectrum. For all the fish? Yeah, for all the fish, gotcha. and everybody just gets in on the action. So it's pretty much three feed-ins per day, one green, one pellets, and one frozen. Um, and it's not religious, sometimes I'll miss a day, sometimes I'll miss two days. You right. know? But the pellets is always, always there going. to give that midday feed-in. Gotcha. So I do feed heavy. Now knowing that you do feed heavy, what's your maintenance schedule looking like? So I do one water change. I try to do it no more than two weeks. I'm not very, uh, I'm always busy, so I, I try not to get beyond two weeks. But usually a week, eight days, nine days, somewhere there about, I do a 75 gallon water change. Okay. And that's because my drum is 75 gallons, so I empty it completely. Uh, and I do that water change once a week. I do run GFO. Um, and that helps to keep my phosphate down. And I have a pretty aggressive skimmer. Okay. Um, Is that, that skimmer running 24 yes, seven? Yes, 24 seven on that skimmer. And aside from that, just the regular filter pads. I don't have socks. I okay. have just a disposable filter Just pad. a filter floss? Just, yep. Yeah, I, I use filter floss in my yep. tank at home. I'm a yep. big fan of it. I know yep. it's kind of old school in the fact. Yep. A lot of people yep. don't really run filter yep. floss that much anymore, but I like the fact that you can put it in, you can see it fresh as new. And yep. then when you take it out, you can tell that it's done its yep. job. Yep. You can just throw and it away. I think for me, the main reason reason for the filter floss is uh, I don't think my wife would take kindly to me putting the socks in the machine but uh, aside from that that's really it I don't you know I don't do any any other um, chemical filtration I change the floss like two two times a week so okay. every three or four days I'll change it out and um, you know while I feed heavy the heavier feeding is mostly the frozen one mm -hmm. which is a mix of mysis um, all the frozen I kind of make a nice mix and I feed uh, broadcast so the corals will get uh, the fish will get and like I said the skimmer takes takes care of it pretty well so you've got the skimmer anything else down in the sump that's kind of stands out that you use that's important I do to kind of share the, uh, co2 uh, scrubber oh, okay you run um, a co2 yes, scrubber because okay. uh, like I said someone is always home so I find right. the co2 helps my pH without it I'm down about seven nine at nights eight in the days and with it I'll get up to eight three so um, the skimmer I have has two pumps and it's a really aggressive skimmer that pulls um, a lot of air. So with the CO2 scrubber, it dries my pH up along with the cockwasser and that, uh, I really love that. I love that a lot. Are you dosing anything currently? Yes, okay. I am. So I, I, I do cockwasser. Um, okay. There's a tall container of cockwasser, approximately four gallons, uh, four and a half. I'll go through that in about seven days. So about a week I have to top that off and alkalinity, that's it. You had mentioned that there's the chiller outside as well. Are you running that chiller 24 seven? Yes. Okay, yes. and then what do you keep in the tank at temperature wise? Uh, 78. The 78, is set okay. at 78. Gotcha. And um, so it's set where if it does not need to come out, to come on, it won't, but like the last summer we had was a really hot one. Yeah. And so even though my home temperature is around 72 degrees, so majority of the time it's off, but when it needs to, it'll kick on. I saw earlier you're running an Apex system, correct? Yes. Is it a full Apex system? It is a full Apex system. Gotcha, okay. Um, it was set up for me because I, I, I'm no good with uh, computers, but uh, <laughs> I've had it the Apex with me because this one is one of the older ones. I had to change the brain, but I've had it for a while. And so um, once it's been set up, it just runs. And basically it's just more of a fail safe to control my skimmer from overflowing, turn the lights on and off, uh, things like that. You know, I don't run the leak detection, most of the fancier stuff, but just, it's like a, a real fail safe for me. That's for sure. pretty much how I use it. You had mentioned there's a, there's a frag yes. tank underneath here. Okay. Yes. So, so this, how big is the frag tank? Uh, 75 gallons. You built this one as well? Yeah, so it's, it's one sump. So the entire sump is okay. eight feet long. Gotcha. Uh, seven feet long, I mean, 84 inches. And part of the sump is sectioned off as a frag tank that drains right back into the sump. And so the idea behind this was uh, where it's a place for me to keep fishes, for me to keep frags. It's a place for me to do whatever I want. There are things that I couldn't keep up here that I could keep down there. There right. are fishes, you know, sometimes I may want an angel. I can put them down here right. with a different uh, kind of corals and not up there. So it's just, it just gives me another place to do something different. I think my nitrate is running probably around 20. Phosphate is 0.16, somewhere thereabouts. So I'm happy with that. I find that if I go lower, 
then I start to see the LPS looking a little pale. So I kind of keep it right there and it's good enough for the acros. What's your alkalinity sitting at? Right now it's around nine. Okay. I usually aim for eight, but right now it's about nine. And if I want to fix something, I generally try to do uh, maybe a water change. And if I got to adjust something, I try to adjust it during the water change. Okay. You know, so add, that way you're kind of introducing it right away. Yes. Gotcha. Add my calcium or whatever it may be, I can bump it up during the water change. I have, I have to ask, there's a couple of colonies of corals in here that have grown either very well or you've got them very large, but there's the elegances in the back. Yes. There's that Ghanipora in the back yep. as well. Another elegance as well. How yep. long have you had those pieces? So, those are some really big so pieces. So all three corals that you just pointed out are as old as the marine baited. They're probably wow. about 10 years old. Okay. So that elegance in the far corner is probably the oldest one. Okay. And that one I've probably fragged 15 times wow. over the years wow. and I fragged it and got because it got so big right and what I used to notice is it would get so big that the bottom half would start to die back because it wouldn't get any light so okay. I, would, I would be forced to frag it right. all the time almost I, like SPS where it kind yeah. of shadows yeah. itself out and I would keep a small frag and grow the small frag again oh, that's cool. what I found that works I, I design a system where basically I get a a stilt and I put the elegance up on that stilt and so if you notice, you could see clear underneath that yeah, elegant. Yeah, okay. And once I did that, I, they, they can go much bigger as long as flow gets under there. It'll be pale under there, but it won't die. I have and never so thought of that. this one fully opens is about 18 inches across. Yeah, this one's yeah. super big. Yeah, by, by the end of the day, it'll be almost touching the chalice on one end wow. all the way to the other end. And so, you know, there's a few corals in here that have been with me quite a while. And I, I love that. I love starting with a small frag. You know, most of these, these were single heads and they've just grown into into colonies yeah i, I was gonna say that. i mean and yep, a I lot of these that. i'm sure you've grabbed recently and they've grown super yep. well but yep. i mean there are so many corals in here that just blow me away i mean like we were just saying every time i every time i look i see something new whether it be a fish a coral or yep. something right yep. there's just so many amazing things in this tank a couple of clams as well do you yes. have any kind of tips for keeping clams and so, success with them i i was a big clam fan it was I, acros and clam and i went through a phase where i i would lose like five clams per night wow. um and come to find out it was a snail a particular slug that was in the tank never seen it couldn't identify it but one night i sat up with a light to find out what it was and so what i've learned is whenever you get clams do a freshwater dip on them and it helps a lot and if you see a clam not looking happy a freshwater dip i've left them in the in the water for as long as 15 minutes in the freshwater dip and you put them back in the tank and they just open up and i have not lost a clam since because whatever parasite that comes with it usually is killed in that freshwater dip. So I've had really good success with clams ever since then, and I haven't lost any since. You've done an absolutely outstanding job with this tank. This is a tank that I really, really want to come back and visit here down Thank the line. You, you know, yes. six months, a year yeah. down the line, I'm definitely going to want to yeah. come back and see all the growth. It's been a lot of fun talking reef with you, checking Thank out you. your tank. I want to say thank you so much to you guys for checking out this video, checking out this interview. Derek, it's been an absolute pleasure. Awesome. I um, appreciate it. If you guys have enjoyed this one, if you guys are liking this tank, all of the custom tank installs we've recently done on the YouTube channel, Derek is the master behind creating these systems. So big kudos to Derek. He does an amazing job. And I just want to say thank you so much to you guys for watching all the way till the end. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads.